this tutorial follows on from my last tutorial on refraction and it is on total internal reflection. Now you will definitely have to answer a question based on this in your exam. You'll probably need to explain how it works and you'll also need to work out an equation or use an equation to work out um, what the uh, this thing called the critical angle is, the angle at which um, any light ray entering above the critical angle will result in total internal reflection. Okay, so let's just backtrack a little bit and talk about some of the ideas of refraction. Now remember that refraction is the, the changing of speed that occurs when a uh, wave enters a different medium. Now in the case of total internal reflection, there's one rule that's, that's always true. In the case of uh, light, the light wave must be going from an optically more dense medium into an optically less dense medium. So to draw you a picture and show you how this works, here's our, our normal, the line perpendicular to the boundary, and we have our, our, two, um, our two boundaries, or our two mediums. Um, let's make this one here ear. Okay, so N, the refractive index, would be equal to 1. And uh, this one down here will make the water again, where the refractive index is 1.3. Okay, so a reminder, when uh, light goes from an optically more dense medium to an optically less, less, less dense medium, it uh, speeds up and it bends away from the normal. So if our light ray is entering the water at this angle here, this is our angle of incidence, when it enters into the air, it is going to speed up and it's going to bend away from the normal. So our angle of refraction is here. So as we would expect, the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Now I want you to imagine that we, we increase the angle of incidence to be bigger than what it was before. Okay, so in our second diagram, same boundary, we have our normal. And in this case, we're making our angle of incidence bigger. Try that again. Okay, so the angle of incidence is coming in at a greater angle than before. Now, as you know, that as we increase the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction is going to become larger and larger and larger because what's happening is it's bending further and further away from the normal. Now, the largest possible angle of refraction that you can get is a situation where the angle of refraction is so large that it bends at an angle of 90 degrees. So in this case, our theta 2 is equal to 90 degrees. Anything more than that and it won't be entering into the, the air anymore. When this occurs, we give the angle of incidence a special name. We call the angle of incidence the critical angle. Okay, the critical angle. And the critical angle occurs when the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so that's really quite important. When the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, this angle here, the angle of incidence is called the critical angle. This links in to total internal reflection because what happens if we make the angle of incidence even larger? So in this case, we make the angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. So again, we draw in our boundary in our normal, and we have a new angle of incidence, which is greater than before. Okay, so the angle of incidence is greater than the initial one. In this case, what happens is, rather than the light ray refracting into the second medium, into the air, the light ray will totally internally reflect. 
So it's no longer refraction, it is now reflection, where the angle of incidence will be exactly equal to the angle of reflection. So in this case, theta 1, the angle of incidence, is equal to theta 2, the angle of reflection. There is no refraction taking place. This only occurs when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. So remember before, this was our critical angle. The angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle when the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Any angle of incidence that's greater than the critical angle will result in total internal reflection, where there is absolutely no refraction whatsoever. So in your exams, you're going to have to describe this. And uh, it's probably worth up to excellence if you can do a good job of it. And uh, my recommendation would be that you, you draw the three diagrams. You draw the first diagram showing the light, light ray going from, let's say, the water to the air in this case, and it's refracting into the second medium. You show what happens when the uh, angle of incidence is greater, uh, great enough that the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, and that is where the angle of incidence is given the name critical angle. And then you show what happens when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, which would result in total internal reflection. Now, you're also going to be required to, to work out what the uh, required angle of incidence would be in order for total internal reflection to occur. And as I said before, we know that for any angle of incidence, greater than the critical angle, total internal reflection will occur. So what we can do is we can use Snell's law again to work out what the critical angle would need to be for that to happen. So Snell's law states that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. In this case, our n1 would be the refractive index of the first medium, which is the water. Theta 1 is actually going to be equal to the critical angle, provided that theta 2 is equal to 90 degrees. So when they're ever asking you to work out the critical angle, you always make the angle of refraction 90 degrees, because we know that for any angle of incidence greater than the critical angle, total internal reflection will occur. So putting numbers into this equation for the example I gave you before, we know that the um, N1 is a refractive index of the water, the first medium the light enters. That's your 1.3. Sine of theta C, the critical angle, will be equal to N2, which is the air, and refractive index of air is 1, times the sine of 90 degrees. Now a little bit of <clears throat> rearranging. The sine of 90 is actually equal to 1, and 1 times 1 is 1, so therefore we can simplify this to, to 1.0, which means the sine of theta c will be equal to 1.0 divided by 1.3, which means that the critical angle will be equal to the inverse sine of 1.0 divided by 1.3. All right, so putting that into the calculator, Okay, so we're going to go inverse sine of 1.0 divided by 1.3, and that gives us an angle of 50 point, I think it was 28 degrees. Right, so what does that mean? That means that at an angle of 50.28 degrees, the light ray is going to refract at an angle of 90 degrees. It also means that for any angle of incidence that is greater than 50.28 degrees, we are going to get total internal reflection occurring. For example, if the angle of incidence happened to be 60 degrees, then the light ray would totally internally reflect and the angle of refraction would also be 60 degrees. Um, plenty of applications on with total internal reflection.
probably the main one you'll come across is fiber optics. So the idea with fiber optics is you have a fiber optic cable, which is normally made of glass, and uh, your glass has a refractive index of around about 1.5, and on the outside of the glass you've got your ear, and your ear has a refractive index of equal to 1. <clears throat> if your light ray enters the glass at an angle of incidence that is greater than the critical angle, then what actually happens is the light ray will totally internally reflect within the glass medium. And that's really handy because you can then use very, very thin glass fibers to transmit light or information in the form of light at, uh, at very high speeds, at the speed of light. And that is how things like the ultra-fast broadband is going to work in, in this country.